Welcome back. Morgan Parra kicked three penalties as France advanced to their Rugby World Cup final with a 9-8 nail-biting victory over a 14 main Wales in their semi-final today. Wales took the lead in the eighth minute through a James Hook penalty and at that stage Warren Gatland's team were looking comfortable. However, they were forced to play more than three quarters of the match without captain Sam Warburton who received a red card for a dangerous tackle on France, Wingo Vincent Clerk in the 18th minute. It was only the second time time a player has been sent off in the knockout stage of the Rugby World Cup. From there, France were dominating but could only score three penalties all from the boot of Para, which proved to be enough. And ahead of the other semi-final, All Blacks captain Richie McCaw admitted to reporters that the onus was on the experienced players in particular to stand up and be counted if New Zealand's quest to win the World Cup for the first time in 24 years is to stay alive. I think, uh, I think everyone should be thinking like that, but certainly the guys like myself, um, I've just been captain and the guys that have been around a while, the leaders, they're the ones that need to go out and perform and, and show the way. But everyone's got to do it. Like to win these games, you've got to have 15 guys plus the seven coming on all to play uh, their best rugby. And we've got to do it together. So, yeah, certainly from my point of view, um, it's, it's, uh, I realise that's the case and we've got to make sure we go out and do it. And um, That's exciting too, you know. Their opponents, Australia, must overcome a significant hoodoo if they are to advance to the final. They have not beaten the All Blacks at Eden Park since 1986. The Wallabies will be without world-class fullback Kirtley Beal for the match after he was withdrawn from the Wallabies team with a hamstring injury. Adam Ashley Cooper will start at 15 with Anthony Fainga moving from the bench to outside centre. Obviously... You know, it's disappointing for Kirtley himself. He worked very hard to, to do everything that he could to, to get right, but um, you know he felt it, it just wasn't right. But we've trained all week, uh, you know, without him there or without the, the chance of having him there. So we're, we're fully prepared for, for the situation for him not to play. Casey Stoner dominated qualifying for the Australian Grand Prix today to extend his MotoGP record to 11 poles this season and boost his chance of sealing the championship with two races to spare. Honda rider Stoner, who earlier slammed organisers for the bumpy state of the track, lapped the circuit in 1 minute 29.9 at 75 seconds for his fourth straight pole at Phillip Island. The Australian's time was nearly a half a second faster than reigning world champion George Lorenzo and puts him in the box seat to clinch his home Grand Prix for a fifth straight time. Stoner can also steal the championship with victory on Sunday. Today we managed to uh, to get that bike really comfortable for us. Uh, you know, we got it turned in the way we wanted it to. Still need a little bit more rear grip, but uh, I think everybody's in the same position. And, uh, you know, step by step we just continue to get faster. And, you know, this afternoon we, um, you know, we've done two race distances basically on hard tyres. Everything feels good, and uh, once we put the soft tyres on, we're able to go, uh, you know, quite a chunk faster. So we'll uh, we'll see what the the weather holds for tomorrow and, and how everything is. But um, you know, we couldn't ask much more for them this weekend so far. In tennis, Andy Murray's winning streak continued at the Shanghai Masters in China as he powered into the last four with victory over Australian qualifier Matthew Ebden. Murray, who won 6-3, 6-2, came into the Shanghai Masters off the back of consecutive titles at Bangkok and Tokyo and is within two matches of making it a hat-trick of wins in Asia. He was joined in the semi-finals by Feliciano Lopez, who was also won in straight sets during the evening session. Lopez found the hard courts to his liking, brushing aside top seed Rafa Nadal's third round conqueror Florian Mayer 6-2-6-4. His win sets up an all-Spanish semi-final today against David Ferrer, who beat Andy Roddick earlier on Friday, while Murray will face Japan's Ki Nishikuri. Arsenal manager Arsene Wenger defended Wayne Rooney at Friday's news conference at London Colney. Wenger commented at length on Rooney's kick-out and subsequent red card in England's two-all draw with Montenegro. Uh, he's a great player, Rooney. Uh, he had, uh, the other day he had uh, a bad reaction. I've seen that from Zidane. I've seen that from many great players, you know. Uh, uh, it's sometimes a consequence of... Uh, uh, the, the immense pressure they are under because uh, everybody expects them always to do something special I think he had, on the day he knows that he had not a special day because recently he was exceptional during the single game and on the day he was not 
in such a good form and that he was a bit frustrated. He shouldn't have done it, but you, have that. you cannot have a commitment of Rooney and as well not, not expect that at some stage in one game he can uh, go a little bit overboard. He's a guy who fights in every single game. Meanwhile, Manchester City manager Roberto Mancini praised midfielder David Silva at Friday's pre-weekend news conference in Manchester. The Italian refused to comment on the disciplinary hearing of controversial forward Carlos Tevez. However, Mancini reserved his highest praise for Silva, whom he thinks has developed into one of the world's top players. I think that he's one of the best players in, in the world for me. And, but also for him, it's difficult to play all the games. Uh, also, Silva played two games against Scotland, played very well, scored two goals, one assist. Uh, but I think that in this moment, I think that he improved a lot uh, in the last year. And finally, Real Madrid coach Jose Marino played down talks that he could be coaching Portugal's national team in their decisive Euro 2012 playoff. Portugal, who missed out on automatic qualification for next June's finals in Ukraine and Poland after Tuesday's 2-1 defeat in Denmark, will face unseeded Bosnia in the playoffs. And that is your sport. Finally this evening, the fifth edition of the Abu Dhabi Film Festival is showcasing nearly 200 films from 45 countries. The 10-day cinematic celebration draws talent, celebrities and movies to the UAE. With an increasingly international profile and a surge in filmmaking in the region, the festival offers a broad cultural experience. The Abu Dhabi Film Festival was established to help create a vibrant film culture in the region. This year's opening gala was held at new venue, the Fairmont Bab al Bar. The red carpet event saw Arabian glamour, leading figures in Arab cinema and burgeoning local talent take the spotlight. International competition jury members were enthused by the new wave of regional filmmaking. The, the fact that so many of these screenings are sold out within 24 hours or 48 hours is really thrilling. You can see there's an audience here hungry for uh, you know, films that speak to their lives and, and, and filmmakers from the region. Over 50% of the films in the festival are prolific new Arab works. Some are influenced by the recent social political developments in the region. I'm here to uh, do a talk about uh, how did the Arab Spring affect the cinema and filmmakers. Actually, I'm going to change the title once I speak in the talk because I'm going to talk about how did the film makers affect and make and have a hand in having an Arab Spring today. The glamour of the red carpet became a platform to further reveal developments in the regional film industry. I'm participating with Asma and as an executive producer, not an actress this time. Um, the film is uh, Hind Sabri starring the film, Megat Kidwani Hani Aydil and director Amr Salama. This film is uh, about uh, HIV, it's about AIDS, uh, and it's a very controversial film. It's the first time to be um, um, triggered in the cinema, in the um, Egyptian cinema. There are also some highly anticipated Hollywood blockbusters headlining the event. The Eyes of March, starring George Clooney and Ryan Gosling. And the opening gala movie, Monsieur Lazare, has already been entered into the foreign language category at the Academy Awards. The inspiration was a play. It was a one-man solo play, just one hour, uh, the story of an immigrant in Montreal, and it touched me very uh, much. And I went to see the playwright and I asked her, can I make a film about that? And she said yes. So four years later, uh, here we are. Festival directors emphasize film as a medium for intercultural dialogue, with new venues to help bring the festival to the masses. We had had a, an idea for a long while of doing screenings outdoors and this seemed to us and seems to us to be the ideal place in Abu Dhabi to do it. People can sit here in a few minutes and see a fantastic screen on an enormous, a fantastic film on an enormous screen and out of the corner of their eyes they can see the magnificent Sheikh Zayed Grand Mosque. So besides the glamour of the red carpet and a diverse programme of shorts, features and documentaries, there's also an array of other activities at the festival. There's panel discussions, masterclasses in directing, producing and on how to make it in the industry. It really is a unique opportunity for festival goers to find out about the art and the business of making a film. Zoe Richards, 7 National News. And with that, let's take a look at your weather forecast for tomorrow.
before we head out, here are your top stories again. UAE to boost humanitarian efforts according to the ruler's representative. UAE Minister of Environment and Water warns on the effects of fluctuating food prices. And Bangkok businesses stay open despite ongoing floods. Well, that brings us to the end of the bulletin. As always, we love to hear your comments. You can contact us at news at city7tv.com or by calling us on 04367 2230. But from the entire news team, it's goodbye for now.